What up, y'all? UFC TDAP breakdowns. Like, follow, subscribe. Um, <laughs> I was just looking at this. First of all, this card um, was the uh, ESPN UFC on ESPN number thirty-four. Uh, 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 Luke versus Muhammad. Uh, before we even get started, I'm just gonna apologize for the names. <laughs> So the first fight uh, is between Kevin Kroom and um, Alatangeli. Al Alatangeli, he's a Mongolian guy out of China. It's Alatangeli guy. <laughs> he he hit Kroom fourteen times in a row, and like one of the hits made Kroom just face plant somehow, just bow, arms spread out, but. Kroon was getting up the whole time. Like, he didn't go out. Like, even after it was called off, he was still standing. I mean, he was wobbled, and it was over. But I, I, hats off to how tough Kroon is. And um, Ala, Ala hits with, like, he has stone fist. That guy uh, won that by TKO. This this card was crazy. The prelim card, like, there was every kind of, just the whole card. There was, like, every kind of victory you can see virtually in a UFC uh, event. Anyway, so then you had um, Stella Nunez versus Sam Hughes. Um, Stella Nunez really won this fight. Um, but uh, at the end of the second round, Hughes got this, like, takedown. She got her in this crucifix, and Nunez had no answers. And then... Um, and all through the fight, she was getting, Nunez was getting warned about eye pokes because she kept having her fingers extended. And, and she poked her twice, so she ended up getting a point taken in that third round. And she complained about it, like, what, what? But it's like, come on, man. He been warning you the whole fight, and you didn't already poked her in the eye and had to have a stop for it. Like, what are you talking about? But, um, and then Sam Hughes got her mounted, and she never lost that mount control. And then so Sam Hughes wins by majority decision, which means one judge thought uh, Nunez won. The other two thought Sam Hughes won because she lost that point in the third round. That changes everything. Nunez really won the fight, but that point changes everything. So then next up we had um, we had uh, 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 Jordan Vin, uh, Jordan Vivit Viavit Jordan Viavit versus uh, Trey Ogden Jordan Viavit. I'm saying his name wrong. What, what is it? Vit? Live it? I think I have, I, yeah, I uh, have a typo in my note. That's what it is. I'm like, who's Jordan Vivid? I don't remember this fight. It's Jordan Livid. So Jordan Livid is like uh, super flamboyant. But he's good. He's a good fighter, though. And uh, he's he's much improved in the stand-up, but uh, it, it's not his main thing. His main thing is really the, uh, the submission game. Um... I can't. It seems like every fight I've seen him in, he fights with the guy for a while, and at some point just gets him in a crazy submission. And I mean, they tap quick once he gets him. Like it's not a long, drawn out thing with him. Like he's he's really good at the jujitsu. Um, uh, I had the first round being pretty even. Um, I think Ogden probably. Uh, probably had the better of that round um he definitely he got him in a guillotine that uh would have tapped jordan but uh he was able to just hold hold out to the end of the round the second round i gave it to jordan but i thought it was very even also but there was like this weird moment where ogden came in and he headbutted jordan in the jaw and jordan like stopped the fight for it which i, I get it because it was an illegal blow but like it just whatever happened to his jaw it was it was weird anyways um Ogden sounded like he was broken in the corner after round two. And then in round three, it was like, <clears throat> it was almost um, completely on the ground. Um, at some point on the feet, he had two big right hands. I mean, he had top control. He did that crazy ass dance after he won. Uh, Jordan Levitt won by, and what's crazy is Jordan, and it, it was a close fight though, don't get me wrong. Um, I think probably the first round was probably Ogden. It was a close round, but it was probably odd. He was throwing his outside leg kick that was really effective, uh, Jordan Levitt. And in the second round, I gave it to Levitt, but it was very close. Third round was Levitt's. So if, if the judges gave the first two to um, 
Ogden. I see how it could be, you know. But yeah, um, Jordan Lever won by split decision. So that's the third type of decision we had, or the second type of decision, third type of a uh, win, uh, uh, win type we've seen in this in this card so far. So then next up, we had Chris Barnett versus Martin Boudet. Um, so like uh, Boudet had really good movement. I'm sorry, uh, Barnett. So Chris Barnett is like, uh, uh, Barnett had good movement, not Boudet. Barnett is like this, this like, he's tiny, but he's huge, right? So he's he's like the shortest dude in the heavyweight division, but he's big, but he's like Taekwondo. So he does this crazy spinning. And I mean, he's so agile to be so big. He's dancing to the ring. <laughs> he's, a, he's a show. Um, and Boudet is much more of a, a stalking, you know, just, I'm going to get you. And so, like, you know, when you see it um, in that first round, uh, Barnett had the movement, and he was, you know, trying to keep that going, but Boudet was just suffocating him, and he would get him into the grapple, and that's where Boudet was really thriving. Um, in the second round, uh, uh, the second round went pretty much the same as the first round. Uh, Barnett was moving around trying to do his thing, and he, you know, he did some flashy moves, and some. he had some, some big punches, too, but Boudet would just get him. <laughs> that's just what it looked like at the end of round two Barnett was complaining to his corner that his rib was broken and in the third round there was a body shot I don't even remember what kind of body shot I just remember there was a body shot like right at right on where he said his rib was broken and Barnett like crumpled like it was over and then Boudet was elbowing him in the back of the head top down to the back of the head which is like two illegal strikes technically it's illegal to go north south and it's illegal to go to the top of the head or back of the head but anyway so uh they stopped the fight but the way they stopped it instead of awarding the uh disqualification win to um chris barnett they went to the scorecards so martin boudet who pretty much won the whole fight other than the third round which barnett was doing pretty good in the third round to the uh rib thing uh uh, or to the elbow thing, I should say. So, uh, Mark Boudet won on the scorecards via technical decision. So, that is the third different type of decision, fourth different type of win on this card so far. So, then um, next up, we have Rafa Garcia versus Jesse Ronson. Um, Ronson, I don't know why, but the way his stand up style, he reminds me of Martin Vittori. He just looks like him. Like his. Something about the way his he's standing, his movement. He looks like Martin. He reminds me of Martin Vittori. Um, I felt like Rafa won the first round. Uh, round two was pretty even, um, except for <laughs> Rafa. Um, he uh, needle dude in the head when he was coming up. Lost a point for it. Which is crazy because in the last one, they that was the end of the fight, even though old dude was kind of begging to keep fighting. I don't know, it was early in the round, different referee. So, uh, <laughs> basically, uh, Jesse Ronson had, uh, I'm sorry, Rafa Garcia had ground control for the rest of the fight and won by rear naked choke. So, this is now the uh, <laughs> fifth different type of win. <laughs> We have a we have a TKO a submission, a majority decision, a split decision, a technical decision. Um <clears throat> next up we had Brandon Jenkins versus Jakar Close. Um Jakar Close. The f okay, so first of all, Jenkins is a zombie. Jakar Close had this double like right hook. It was like a right hook to a right straight kind of thing that he threw that just like knocked down Jenkins. Um but like Jenkins was smiling when Jakar was on him, ground and pounding him. Like, so it's kind of like, what? But uh, that Jenkins dude, he's a zombie man. Guy had like chin. Um, Jakar close won that round, like clearly. And then um, second round, man, like Jakar close hit this dude with chairs. Like it was a WWE event, man. <laughs> but like um, he put him through a table off the turnbuckle. It was crazy, bro. But Jenkins just still got up. Like, even after Jakar Close got the TKO, Jenkins was still getting up. Like, he was getting up. <laughs> Shit was crazy, man. But, yeah, um, Jakar Close won that by TKO. He, um, I, he hit him so many times. Like, just, <laughs> I mean, but Jenkins was fighting. Don't, don't get me wrong. It wasn't, like, one way. Jenkins was fighting back, and he was defending, like, he was, 
the ref probably could have ended it way earlier, but Jenkins was still in it. And even after the TKO, Jenkins was still trying to get to his feet. Like, there was never a point where he was out. <laughs> All right. And next up, we had Lena Landsberg versus Patty um, Kianzad. Um, they had a fight uh, previously uh, that Kianzad won when they were, like, early in their careers. Um, first round, Kianzad won. Um, the second round was pretty even, but like in the middle, the doctor was brought in for a cut on uh, Landsberg's eye. There was a huge, it was a huge elbow knockdown, and like that's her, her nickname is like Queen Elbows or something like this. And like, man, it's like the fight was going on like normal, and at some point she was just like, I'm gonna get an elbow now. Think, <laughs> it was crazy. It's elbow queen uh, won the fight with an elbow. Well. Uh, uh, Landed more elbows. Um, she won that. She won that. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, kids that won the third round. Uh, <laughs> she didn't win the fight with an elbow. Kids that Penny kids that won the fight. Just uh, Lena Landsberg definitely lived up to her nickname with some big elbows. Uh, landed a knockdown with one. Uh, <laughs> but Penny kids that won that by unanimous decision, which is. <laughs> Our fifth different type of decision that we've had on this uh, prelim and our uh, seventh different type of win. And then uh, for the uh, main event, we had uh, Devin Clark versus uh, William Knight. So William Knight in his last fight showed up like 35 pounds of a weight or something crazy like that. And so Devin Clark looking at his record and seeing that William Knight fights at 205 is thinking he'll come in at 230 pounds or something like that. He showed up fight night weighing in at 251 pounds. Uh, William Knight, man. Anyway, so this is a, a late notice fight. But uh, even with all that weight, Will, William Knight still can dance around, throws throws crazy kicks, hits hard as a truck. So, you know, I'm just saying maybe he should just fight at heavyweight. He's, he's short for heavyweight, though. Anyway, so Devin Clark goes up to heavyweight because uh, William Knight can't make it down to 205 in short notice. Excuse me. So, first round was pretty competitive, but at one point, uh, William Knight had him in a front headlock for a long time, and he went straight from the front headlock to a flying knee. It was crazy. Um, what? Where's the rest of my notes on this fight? Did I put them on the... <laughs> I don't have no notes on this fight. Where's the... Oh, I deleted my notes. Anyways, well, Devin Clark won by knockout. Uh, in the second... At the end of the second... No, in the third round, Devin Clark won by knockout. I apologize for that. I don't have my notes. I just remember they were having wild exchanges. They both were hitting each other hard as shit. They both were getting staggered. <laughs> Devin Knight uh, ended up getting the, uh, the KO in the, th in the third round. I remember William Knight held on to a front headlock more than once for a long ass time. Like longer than he should have. But I think he was tired and he was getting his energy back. I think Devin Clark was doing the same thing. <laughs> Big boys. All right. On to the main card. We got uh, Malnair Lazez versus Ainge Lusa. I can't believe I said those names relatively right. I'm sure I got them wrong, but I was, you know, I think that's pretty close. Um, Lazez is a, is a really fun fight. I remember watching him on Fight Island. And he was a really fun fight out there. He's like, Dana White's son was like, you got to get this guy in. So Dana White got him, and he's proved his he's proved his worth ever since. Um, first round, I had Lazaz. That dude is really good. He's just at striking. He's just all over the place. And don't get me wrong, Angeluza is like hitting hard as shit. And he he was he was throwing too. Just um, Lazaz had answers for him everywhere. Second round was an even closer round, but it was the same thing. Lazaz was just better everywhere. And the third round, <laughs> it's funny. It's in between every round, they they were very cordial. In between rounds, like the, the bell would ring, they would like dap up. They were very nice to each other and respectful. But for some reason, in between rounds, every time Mark Smith, back up, back up, back up, back up. You got back up, back up, back up. Like he couldn't keep them. Like they were just raring to go, but they weren't even like, there was no animosity. It was weird. But yeah, um, Lizez won unanimous decision. And I, it was the same thing. 
just uh, I think Lusa kind of learned and adapted every round, but Lizez just had an answer for his adaption, uh, 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 adaption, for his uh, adapt, adaptation. There we go. Those are words. Um, next up, we got Pat Sabatini, Pat, Pat Sabatini versus T.J. Lorraine. Um, this was a this is like the same dude fighting each other. So it was a, it was a bit of a chess match. You know what I mean? Um, just Pat Sabatini was a bit better. Um, he had a body kick in the first round that, that almost ended the fight, I think. But um, um, uh, Laramie, Laramie, TJ Laramie was able to, uh, I think he ended up sweeping him on the ground and then kind of stalling a bit and regaining himself and getting back into the fight. Um, Sabatini had some dominant ground control and ground and pound um, pretty much for the rest of the fight and won by unanimous decision. Um, next up, we got Myra, Myra Bueno Silva versus you, uh, uh, Wu Yunnan. So these are two fighters I like both of them. Wu Yunnan is like a little itty bitty Chinese Dominic Cruz. Like that's I don't know. That's how I explain her fight style. It looks like Dominic Cruz. Like like she's like she's doing a very good Dominic Cruz. She's like this little. She like. <laughs> Uh, and then Myra Bueno Silva is just, she's so, she seems like this happy, nice lady. She's so vicious in the ring. She's vicious. Um, it was a fun fight. They were both throwing a lot. There were crazy, crazy, crazy just exchanges. And the whole fight was crazy. Um, but I, I felt like um, Myra Bueno Silva was winning. I felt like she won every round. And, um. It seemed like Wu threw and landed way more punches than Myra, but every punch Myra threw looked like it hurt Wu. You know what I mean? Like, every punch looked like it hurt. Um, Myra won by unanimous decision. Um, next up, we had uh, Miguel Baeza versus Andre Fialo. Fialo is this dude. He's like Portuguese Portuguese. Like, he's not Brazilian Portuguese. And he, uh, he fought... He just fought somebody, and I mean, he is tough, and he's really good. Just the other guy who he fought just, you know, ended up getting the better of him that, that night. But uh, in this fight, you kind of saw it. I mean, his movement was really good. His striking was really good. And then he got, he got him in this, like, clinch, and he just didn't let go and landed these uppercuts and just uh, finished him after that. Um, won it first round, TKO. Um and then after the fight, he tried to, Fialo tried to tell his opponent, like, you know, hey, man, we're going to train together. And his opponent said, nah, man, I'm done. They're getting rid of me after this. And he wouldn't shake his hand. And he was just like, oh, it was, it was such a, it, was like, it hurt my heart. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> damn, Dana, damn. <laughs> and then um, for the co-main event, we had uh, Cal uh, Barallo, Cal Barallo versus Gadzik Omar Gadzikiev. Listen, man, if your first and your last name are the same, you probably gonna be a scary dude. Because <laughs> the only people I see with the same first and last name, like them, them motherfuckers, in fighting, I mean, they're always like scary guys. But Cal uh, was like, not bad though. Um, at some point, at some point, um, um, Giz, Giz, uh, Gadzik, which is, you know, he's known to be a wrestler, ground control guy, got him on the ground. Um, Kyle got like a sweep back to control. I feel like he won the first round. Actually, I feel like he won every round, to be honest with you. Um, at some point, um, um, Gazik overswung and like ended, um, Kyle ended up getting back control. And, and um, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Gazik ended up getting back control after some big lands from um, from uh, Kyle. Kyle hit him a bunch of times. I'm sorry, I misspoke. Kyle hit him a bunch of times, and then he overswung and missed, and Gazik ended up getting back control after that. But, like, again, I said, I feel like I feel like he beat him everywhere. At some point, he freaking illegally need him. This was the most referee and judge intervened card ever. Uh, at some point, he illegally need Gazik, so there was a point taken, but it didn't matter because uh, he TK or uh, they went. I'm sorry, he, he illegally need him. They stopped the match, so we had one where they illegally need, stopped the match, went to cars. One where they illegally elbowed, uh, uh, took a point, kept fighting. Or I'm sorry, ended the fight. Oh, look, hold on, what did they do in that other one? 
<laughs> That's my point, man. This car was crazy, man. There's all kinds of like weird rules and stuff involved in this one. So you have you have uh the technical decision with the stop from the illegal elbow. And then you have a point being taken. <laughs> You have a point being taken for an illegal knee, but they didn't stop the fight. Like, oh wait, they did stop the fight on this one. What am I getting a mistake? What's the other? There's two knees and an elbow, right? <laughs> There's an eye poke that led to a point. Legal elbow to stop the fight. Right, and then there was a there was a knee that was just a point, and then they continued fighting, which led to uh, uh, do other uh, other dude getting stopped. Fucking, it was a crazy car. It was a crazy car. Um, but yeah, uh, so for this illegal knee, they did stop the fight. They took the point, but uh, Kyle Kyle still won by technical decision because they went to the scorecards instead of disqualifying him. Um, I guess they said the knee was inadvertent. Um, and then for your, for your main event, you have Vicente Luque versus Bilal Muhammad. They fought before Vicente knocked out Bilal. Everybody knows uh, um, Bilal Muhammad is, is uh, he's been getting a lot better, and he's been winning and winning and winning. So in this fight, first round, um, I felt like Vicente was probably getting a better of Bilal on the feet. Uh, Bilal had a big takedown, um, and he kept that takedown. And then in the second round, you saw uh, Muhammad's footwork. He was really getting busy. He was getting takedowns. He was keeping control. And they, they were both doing this weird thing where one went orthodox, the other went one left-handed. One went left-handed, the other one went orthodox. Like they were doing, they were switching stances with each other. Like the whole fight it was weird. Um, in the third round, Muhammad got clipped real early with a left hook, but then late, um, Muhammad got a takedown. Uh, that round was close, third round. I feel like Bilal won that round, too. I feel like he won probably every round. But it was a chess match. Like, every round was close. They could have given any of those rounds to, maybe not the first round or the second round. But any of the other rounds, they probably could have gave to Luke. But it was it was like a chess, it was like a chess match. Where you get two fighters that are pretty equally yoked at the top of the game like that. That's how it goes. Uh, Muhammad won, unanimous decision. Uh, he called out Kobe Covington. Um... It was a good card. You had a uh, DC and DC, Dominic Cruz and Daniel Cormier um, calling the card. I always like their call because they're really analytical. And for some reason, uh, uh, Cruz doesn't really go at uh, DC the way he goes at the other guys. So they have much more of a cordial relationship. <laughs> Anyways, I think that's it. If you still here at this point, I fucking love you. Thanks for listening. I appreciate you. Like, subscribe. Tell a friend or some shit.